Welcome, Jenny. Thank you so much for joining me here to chat about your experience in the Empress Council. Okay, thank you, Sharon. Um, I, I was happy to sort of think about it and think about when I came in and, and what was going on in my life. And I think it was in this late spring of 2020. Mm -hmm. We were we were uh, still kind of locked down or or at least uh, somewhat locked down and and um, and so I think I was feeling more isolated than I had I'd been feeling a calling and a need for a, a group of women. I had been part of a of a small group of women um, that had grown from a an artist way group and and we've been going for quite a few years but there was I was hungry for this depth and um I think they just wanted to get together and chat you know <laughs> and and I being who I am um wanted something more I need I was just I needed a, a circle of women that was willing to to sort of plunge the depths with each other and um one day your email came along and I was just like, well, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it amazing how things show up? And so um, I, I joined and it was really interesting when I first joined because I remember just feeling like we were on Zoom and I was a little bit still getting used to Zoom and um, and we were doing um you know we'd meet I think once every couple of weeks or maybe just on the full moon I think it was it wasn't every week yet mm -hmm. and um and it was great but I, I was also confronting in this way that I really didn't expect myself to be confronted you know and uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember thinking yeah I, I don't know I know I don't know if I'm gonna do this and, and and sort of figuring out how to how to sort of ease my way out of it. And I remember this one day when when I'd been thinking about it, and and my phone rang, and there was your name. <laughs> and I thought, because I was thinking, oh, I'll just send her an email or something. And I just went, oh, it's Sharon, and you know, and, and there you were, and there we and we had this wonderful conversation, and we had this wonderful conversation about. Um, it was this feeling that you projected for me of of it wasn't just what I needed, but what what I could give the group. It was a feeling of mutuality about, you know, it's more than just what you need. It wasn't what you said that way, but it, it, it's it's that you. I remember you saying, "I need you in the group." You know, there was this feeling of being needed and wanted mm. as part of this group as well as my needing and wanting to be part of the group and that was really um it just that was it for me that was that was it that was like my invitation to really step in mm. and um there was a there was a learning curve for me with the technology um being <laughs> being the age I am and the you know not as familiar with all of the um, but I, I loved, um, I loved our, the gatherings. I loved the gatherings. I loved the sharing. I loved that there were women from all over the place and all different kinds of experiences and people that I began to feel, you know, really comfortable with. And then we added the, the Marco Polo aspect of it and, um, and began to share with one another, um, and it wasn't, um, it was a, in a way it was a one-sided sharing, it was that, that ability to just um, open up and allow myself to be seen. And um, at first it felt like there was a little awkwardness about it, but then it became this really comfortable, you know, it wasn't, wasn't something I did, you know, every day, but when I did, it was always felt really deep and, um, 
and true for me. And it didn't really matter if there was a response to it. It just mattered that I knew that people mm -hmm. would be looking at it. It would yeah. be, mm -hmm. you know, in much the same way in, in a, you know, in, in a, uh, 12 step meetings you share and people don't respond they don't answer you back you just share and you're held by that and it felt that way and it, it felt amazingly that way considering we were all on zoom you know that we weren't with each other physically and um and i the the next we i went through a whole year cycle and i and i knew there was it felt like there was this change that I was working on on a change a big change that was going to happen in my life and it it the it it had to do with moving but I was very hesitant about that I, it, it was a lot it was a big move and it was a it would mean leaving a lot behind leaving lots behind and um and I felt really you know I just felt the group that container was something that I could express, you know, either in the group when it was appropriate or individually with people as I began to make friends with these other women. And um, in the end, it was the next year I went down to Charlotte, North Carolina, which is where we eventually moved to. And we, and we went through Charlottesville where there were a bunch mm -hmm. of there were three or four of the women from the Empress Council that were there and I got to meet them and hug them and see them and it was just so lovely it was so lovely um to feel that connection and to feel it so physically you know after being yeah. just little windows and um, yeah, and I remember the picture. Someone had sent the picture from that gathering, yeah. and you yeah. were like, all of you were just radiating. Evening, and... Yeah, it was it was wonderful, <laughs> and um, and then and then we made a decision to move, and so that it, it was interesting because in the process of that move was when I found myself two things happened one I got involved we got involved with a the smaller group within the Empress Council I don't know what you the care group or whatever and that was um that was really powerful and and I was go, able to go through that initiation process which was really powerful and um and all of it was um just the the building blocks of of creating that pathway so that I could do this huge move, which mm -hmm. um, in the end turned out to be a way bigger event than I had ever imagined it would be. And um and eventually um and I, you know, there was I got a lot of support and I felt really held but eventually it came to a place where I felt like I just the container I I wouldn't even say that I outgrew the container it wasn't it was I didn't need that container there was something else that I needed and I knew that I had to step away from it and um it was just this feeling of um I had needed this for, you know, however long it was. And then I didn't need it anymore. It didn't quite fit with what was going on with me. And um, and I struggled with that for a long time thinking, you know, why, you know, why, why that? Or or, you know, am I am I hiding? Am I running away? Am I, you know, why am I giving up this thing that had that had served me? But I really feel like it had done its service, you know, and that was, yeah. and, and then I, and like so much of the way that I um, was moved from, from Kittery, Maine to Charlotte, you know, it was, there were, there was a pathway, you know, it was being laid out and sometimes I could see clearly and, but most of the time I couldn't see clearly. I, I could just get a hint, you know, which is like a hint like that, 
deep soul part of me beckoning me. And then I learned to connect with that yeah. in the context of, of the Empress Circle. I need, yeah. I learned how to listen to that soul call within me. And, and I'm not exactly sure how that happened. You know, I couldn't say it was X, Y, and Z, but it did happen so that, um, then I was able to continue to listen to it, even though it felt like, well, why is it taking me away from this group that had been so important? But I learned, I had learned to trust it. And, um, yeah. and yeah, I would love to just speak into that because, um, many of the women share that it's like, it's such a weird, interesting thing when they can feel their time has come to a closure and that feeling of like, oh my God, I love these women. They're like part of my family. Why would, like a true deep soul family, why would I ever step away? And, you know, and similar. So I'm, I'm bowing down to this theme of like, wow, this really works. <laughs> but that place of I now have in me, you know, that deep centered love. Like I now know I'm lovable. I can, you know, be centered in my own well-being and my connection to source through me that now I can go into the world and, and share this, you know, in a very different way. And um, so I love, you know, that you're speaking into that because yeah. it's an interesting thing because even as you said, it's so subtle and it can be so intellectually challenging to go. Mm -hmm oh my God, this is now calling me, you know what I mean? In a different direction, a new direction. And now I feel able to say yes, yeah. yes. And then over and over again right. throughout the rest of one's life, you know, so that it can always be that true deep aliveness from the depth of who we are. And, you know, when you referred to that, I remember that conversation so well of um, at the beginning, which happens for women of, of each and each in our own way of like I I can't do this you know <laughs> at that moment of we try to like back really far away and, and step out and I remember that conversation and I remember a bit of it was around being the elder yeah and I'm wondering if you might talk to what that was like like truly being our elder for that you know you were in it for two two years two plus years so what did that feel like and well, what happens you, for you as an elder. When you said that, it was really interesting because um, I have, you know, I'm often the eldest person <laughs> in a group because I, I don't hang out with a lot of people who are older than me because I have because of who I am because I have a um, a very youthful. Um, I make friends with a lot of younger women. Um, and, and I always thought uh, it was, it was funny that I was the oldest, because I never felt like the oldest or the elder. And, um, and when you said that to me, something really happened inside of me, it was like, oh, this is, um, how do I want to say this? This gives new and precious meaning to your age. Mm -hmm. It's not like, oh, ha, 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 I'm, you know, mm -hmm. I'm so old, but I don't feel old and I'm really young and all this kind of stuff. You know, it was like, it, it, it gave this respect and um, dignity mm -hmm. to my age and all of my experience. And I felt like, oh, this is important. This is this is an important um, place to step into, realizing how people might look to you, and and how can you, in return, um, either just hold that space, just hold that space of someone who's been alive more than anybody else on that, you know, in that group, or and have had experience. And and also be available to share or to to support in any way because I have been through all those years and it was it was a feeling of um, 
it was a feeling by you honoring that in me, it helped, it made me instantly honor it in myself. Mm -hmm. And I began to think of myself that way and think, okay, you know, this is, this is something different. This is, this is something to try on. This is something to feel your way into. And, um, and it's been, um, Ah, you know, it's it's allowed me to just be in a way that I wasn't before, you know, a, a place of acceptance, you know, someone this weekend, she was saying something about and was leading this group in this workshop that I was at this retreat. And she said, Oh, yeah, and I'm, you know, I've retired. I'm, I'm pretty old. I'm 67. And I said, I said, I'm 76. And she went, Oh, my God, you know, <laughs> You, you know, people always say, you're so well taken care of, whatever. And I think it just makes me laugh because I think I'm just, I'm just me, you know, in here. And yet the, the elder is the part of me that's been me in here for a long number of years. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to do anything with it. It's just about being it. Just be in the breadth and depth of your experience all of it the good the bad the you know the crazy the profound the whatever you know and and um and be open to um I don't want to say to be open to be of service, not I'm going to go out and find something to do, but just if I'm called upon, I'm here. I'm just here. If I'm called upon, you know, mm -hmm. holding space mm -hmm. and paying attention and loving, you know, the, the, in this retreat, this great parade of women from, you know, their early twenties up into their, you know, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I was the oldest one there. You know? um, so that was really precious that you said that. And um, and I have held on to that ever since that time. And, you know, done, done some exploring and some reading and some thinking about it and some writing about it. And um, just grateful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it felt, it filled such a need, you know, and I, and I sense you could receive that, you know, over the years and your time of, of the women who were, you know, numerically younger than you, just looking up to you being so grateful that you were willing to embody that. And even as you just spoke this, like what an elegance of how you spoke about the beingness, you know, as an elder, this deep beingness that allows your natural self to just be breathing mm -hmm. in service, you know. Just um, my my ex husband's great grandmother was alive when we first moved to New Hampshire, and she lived to be one hundred and eight. Wow! And she was she's sort of been my role model she's a farm woman she she would i would there was a basket of black and white photos that sat underneath this tv with rabbit ears and stuff like that and i would just go and get the pictures and i would hand them to her and i'd say what was this what was this and and she would just talk and she would she had this laugh she had this laugh that came just this giggle that came from deep in her belly about things you know just and she made these lap robes for veterans and she and her spinster daughter who was you know quite old when I met her would roll bandages for I don't know the war even though I don't know what people were but she was so present and so just there just so lovely and there and um and lived to be clear as a bell until about 105. Wow. Then she got a little less clear. And I remember the, a, more, a day when she was getting close to 108. And and I brought Alicia in. Alicia was three. 
and we went down to see them at the farm. And Alicia said, um, Grammy, I have a book. Will you read me this book? And Grammy was sitting in her wheelchair singing songs from like the Civil War. I mean, she was just singing away, tapping her foot, stuff like that. And Alicia just looked at her for a little while and she said, that's okay, Grammy. I think I'll read you the book. <laughs> but she was just... She was just there and everybody loved her. People would come in to buy milk from the dairy and say hello to her. And mm. oh, um, such an important part of yeah. her well-being. And I just really had those who hold that, you know. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So mm. I just remember that about her and, and being touched by that. Mm. So. Mm. Well, I'd love to ask you one final thing because I know this was so significant to you and you you spoke this you know at the beginning of this conversation about depth and really being met in your depth being mm. nourished in your depth being seen in your depth and more than anything being welcomed and accepted in your depth can you share kind of what happened you know with that for you in our council well you know I've always been deep and it has not always been well received um in my life and um i think that was part of the hunger that i had in in looking for a group of of women with whom i could share my depth and they i could hear their depth that that mm -hmm. that was something that i really cherish um in my friendships you know i i don't have scads and scads of friends but i have you know, I have maybe, maybe not even two hands full, maybe just even a handful of, of women with whom I can, I know that I can go deep with them and they can go deep with me and we can do that thing that's so magical when, when, you know, maybe I can say when people connect, but I, I just think when women connect <laughs> deeply with one another there's a serious magic that happens. And, um, and I felt like my depth was completely welcome. And I never felt like, oh, God, I wish I hadn't said that, or, oh, I wonder how they think about that. Or, you know, there was that, that license and permission to just speak from that deep place. And, and that in return, it wasn't like in return, I had a conversation because we weren't really set up that way. But in return, I could, you know, get on Marco Polo or I could go on a Zoom and I and I knew I would hear people's depths. I mm -hmm. would hear that and and it would nourish me. It would remind me of my own depths. It would um, inspire me. It would feed me, just feed my soul. And um, it. It always did that. Every time we ever met, it always fed my soul. And um, that was what I was really hungry for. And, you know, my life now, it's, it's, I don't necessarily have those kind of people in my physical world right here in Charlotte, but, um, but I have the, experience of having had that and what it did for me and how I carry that depth into my interactions with other women. And it's not necessarily that I even have deep conversations with people because I'm really aware of being in an environment where I'm not really sure, you know, who the heretics are and who the, who the strong Christians are. And I don't want to freak anybody out, you know, so I'm aware of that. But because that part of me was given permission to be, it's sacred and it's in there. And it and it's a because of that, I can be present with other women from a very deep place, even if it's even if I don't talk from that space, you know, even if all of it is is just saying, Hi, so glad to see you and giving them a hug. I really, I think that's one of the huge gifts that the Empress Council gave me mm. was, was being heard and, and met so that that 
part of me was really acknowledged. It wasn't, it was so, it wasn't so hidden. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Mm. Thank you so much, Jenny. Mm. Thank you, Sharon. Mm.